let somebody shout hallelujah hallelujah glory to the name of the lord good day beloved daughters of zion and calvary's greeting in the mighty name of jesus i consider it such a great privilege to be in your midst this very day and i know that the lord will do something wonderful in all our lives in the name of jesus before we do anything i want to thank the lord jesus christ for this privilege and i thank my mother and my father in the house Pastor and Pastor Mrs. Nkana for giving me this opportunity. Thank you so much, Mommy. Thank you so much, Daddy. God bless you mightily in the mighty, precious name of Jesus. I also bring you greetings from my dear husband, Pastor Samuel Kasali, and all your brothers and sisters from the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Mount Zion, Paris, Salmea, in Kuwait. They send their greetings and their love, and I pray that the Lord will bless each and every one of us in the mighty, precious name of Jesus Christ. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Thank you for this privilege. Thank you, Lord, because before the foundation of the world, you know that this day will come where we will sit to learn at your feet. Lord Jesus, we commit this into your hands. Holy Ghost, I hide myself behind you. I pray that you anoint these lips of clay. I pray that you will send forth your word to each and every one of us. I pray that your word will enlighten. I pray that your word will encourage. I pray that your word will uplift. I pray that your word will correct. I pray that your word will instruct in the name of Jesus. Father, take absolute preeminence. Even as we discuss tonight, Lord, let your word come expressly in the name of Jesus. And at the end, all the glory and all the praise will be yours and yours alone. In Jesus' mighty, precious name we have prayed. Amen, 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 and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Beloved, I count it again a privilege to be here. And the topic I'm looking at this very day is godly and seeking. Godly and seeking. I'll be speaking to the singles specifically. Tonight, I want us to look at what does it mean to be godly and what is seeking all about. First, I'm going to look at it from the dictionary point of view. According to the dictionary, the word godly means to be devoutly religious. It means to obey and to conform to the laws of God. It means also to obey and to respect God. And the word seeking means to attempt to find something. It means to have a desire to obtain or to find something. It also means to be asking somebody for something. So when we bring these two words together, godly and seeking, then would mean for a single man, it will mean someone who is, for a single man or a single woman, it will mean someone who is totally devoted to God, somebody who fully obeys and conforms to the laws and instructions, instructions of God, and somebody who is passionately obeying and respecting God. This is according to the dictionary. Now I want to bring it according to the word of the Lord. The Bible tells us in Psalms 1 verse 1 to 3, Psalms 1 verse 1 to 3, it says, blessed is the man. And when the Bible says man, it's not just talking about the men, it's also addressing the women. It says, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. Two says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Three says, it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever he do it shall prosper. So when we look at this verse, we also see who a godly person is. A godly person is someone who is not working in the counsel on the ungodly, who is fully devoted to obeying God, to obeying the instructions of God. It is someone who does not who does not sit with scornful 
people. It is someone who does not stand in the way of sinners. Praise the name of the Lord. It is someone who delights in the law of the Lord. The dictionary says somebody who passionately obeys the instruction of God. And the Bible is saying someone who delights in the law of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And meditate on it day and night. Let somebody shout hallelujah. So a godly person, a godly single, is not necessarily someone who attends church, is not necessarily someone who fellowship with the brethren, but someone who is devoted to God, someone who, who, who is eager to obey the instructions and the, and the commandments of God, knowing that his commandments are not grievous. Praise the name of the Lord. And someone who, who meditates on his laws day and night. Hallelujah. So a godly, single, and seeking. Praise the Lord. I want to say this. As a man, you are godly and a seeking single. You are looking. You are the one seeking. But as a woman, you are godly and a waiting single. You are the one that is being sought after. You are the one that is waiting to be discovered. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. There are some things I'd like to say to us tonight and i pray that the holy spirit will breathe upon the words and it will impact in the mighty name of jesus what i want to say that there are many things that you must seek as a single person as you join into what's life and destiny even marriage praise the name of the lord many singles are seeking many things but there are key things that you would seek as you join into what's life number one thing that you must seek is you must seek your true identity and purpose via the word of God. You must seek your true identity and discover your purpose via the word of God. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to say this and I want you to listen to it carefully. Who you will marry, the person that God has carved out for you, who you is someone that is tied to your purpose in life. Praise the Lord. Who you will marry is tied to your purpose in life. This is someone that is supposed to help you to fulfill the plan, the ultimate plan and the purpose of God for your life. So while you are single and still either searching or waiting to be found, you need to discover your purpose and you need to work in your purpose. In the book of Genesis 2, you read from verse 1 one till the end genesis 2 from verse 1 to the end we have an account of of creation after god has created everything god created man and put him in the garden to extend to the garden to name the animals to take care of everything in the garden that was the purpose of man that was the purpose of Adam and Adam went about the business, the purpose that God has assigned for him. He went about taking care of the garden. He went about naming the animals and God looked at him again while he was going about his purpose, while he was fulfilling destiny. And God said, it is not good for this man to be alone. In this purpose, in this destiny, in this work that I've assigned to him, he needs someone to be able to help him. He needs someone to support him. He needs needs a help that is suitable and meet for him and that was how marriage came about that was when God said Eve you need to comfort Eve you need to be bred praise the name of the Lord so your purpose is so important because who you will marry is tied to your purpose it's supposed to be someone who will help you to fulfill your god-given purpose i want someone to shout hallelujah and i want to say this when you walk in god's purpose for your life it is easy to be found when you walk in God's purpose for your life. It is easy to find. Praise the name of the Lord. As a single person, your God ordained purpose, your God ordained partner or partner to be is down the road of your purpose. So discover your purpose. Some singles things think that Christian singles think that life begins and ends with marriage. But I'm here to tell you that there is something greater than marriage. And that is your purpose. The reason why God created you. The reason why God formed you. The, the role you are supposed to play in this world. Seek that and follow that. And marriage will come. Praise the name of the Lord. Number two thing that I want to say to you tonight in the short time that I have. Is that you must seek knowledge of a godly marriage seek knowledge of a godly marriage i'm taking that from isaiah 34 and 16 isaiah 34 and 16 it says seek ye 
out of the book of the law and read no one of these shall fail none shall want a mate for the mouth for my mouth it has commanded and my spirit it had gathered them seek out of the book of the law while you wait prepare yourself for marriage while you are waiting either you are seeking as a man or you are waiting to be found as a woman prepare yourself for marriage praise the name of the lord so many people want to get married so many singles want to get married but only few singles understand what marriage is truly and really about according to the word of the lord and that's why the word of god says seek seek god has made provisions god has Bend down what marriage is. God has penned down instructions concerning marriage. God has penned down instructions for your destiny. And you can only find those instructions in his word. If you don't open up the word and read, it will be difficult for you to have the knowledge. Praise the name of the Lord. God has clear guidelines for all his children regarding marriage, regarding life, regarding destiny. But you need to sit down and seek it. You need to search for knowledge. Praise the name of the Lord. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to say to you tonight, listening to me, praise the Lord, that you need knowledge. The Bible says my people perish. For what? For lack of knowledge. If you don't know what God has provided for you, it will be difficult for you to know it when you see it. If you don't know, then you can be deceived with make-believe, with fake. Praise the name of the Lord. God has provided. So there's, the, he has made sure that you won't make mistakes. He has given you the guidelines. He said, do not be unequally yoked. He said, do not do this, do not do that. He's provided these basic guidelines in his word. So you need knowledge. Let somebody shout at you. I want you to lift your voice wherever you are and say this prayer and say, Lord, equip me with the right knowledge for life, for destiny, for marital decisions in the name of Jesus. Lord, help me to have the right knowledge according to your word in the name of Jesus Lord give me the right knowledge in the name of Jesus help me that I will not do things I will not choose I will not seek based on my own human criteria but that I will sort you I will sort you I will seek from you Lord the right knowledge in the name of Jesus Christ in Jesus mighty precious name we are praying read books singles read the word of God find out what God has written concerning you find out his promise concerning your life find out the kind of marriage he has prepared for you and when you have all that knowledge it will be easy for you to to be found it will be easy for you to know what to accept and what not to accept many single people have gone into the wrong marriage wrong relationship because they don't know who they are they don't know what god has provided for them and whatever they saw they thought it was it was it i pray that the lord will give understanding in the mighty name of jesus number three things that I want to say to you tonight is seek the kingdom of God. Seek the kingdom of God. This is the great time. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 1, it says that you should seek the Lord in the days of your youth. In the days of your youth, seek the kingdom of God. The Bible says in Matthew 6 and verse 33, Matthew 6, 33, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all is righteousness, and every other thing will be added unto you. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to say categorically tonight that seeking the kingdom of God is your first step to having a glorious marriage, to having a successful marriage it is seeking his kingdom because when you seek his kingdom every other thing including marriage is an added advantage god just gives it to you because you are seeking the right thing you're seeking his kingdom he takes care of every other thing that concerns you that pertains to you that relates to you i want someone to shout hallelujah serve god with your youthful age don't be one of those 
believers, single believers that think they can, they don't need God. You need God. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah 29, 11, it said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. It said thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. And that future includes marriage. Praise the name of the Lord. So you need the Lord because he holds the future in his hands. He has the roadmap to the future. He has everything planned. So seek him and seek his kingdom. I want to say tonight that a good marriage is a salary paid by God for services in his kingdom. A good marriage is a gift from God to those that are truly seeking him and propagating his kingdom. How do I know this? The Bible tells me in Proverbs 19 and verse 14, Proverbs 19 and verse 14, it says that a prudent wife is from the Lord. Let somebody shout hallelujah. A good husband is from the Lord. A good wife is from the Lord. So seek the kingdom of God. Praise the name of the Lord. And do not be desperate for marriage. Number 14 that I want to tell you, there is more to life than marriage. There is so much Sometimes when we are desperate, we make mistakes. We don't see the plan of God. I want to say that God is never late. Sometimes it feels like everybody is going ahead of you. Like you are way behind. You're trying to catch up. Everybody seems to be getting married and things seem to be slow for you. But I want to say to you tonight, God is never late. And he's not slack consigning his promises. Do not be desperate. It may not happen to you now, but it does not mean that God has forgotten or abandoned you. I want to say tonight, God takes his time when he wants to come big. And I decree to someone, God is coming big on your account. Let me just remind you of the story of Anna and Penina. Penina had children. Anna did not have any. Penina had many. Anna had none. But when Anna finally had Samuel, Samuel is the child, the man, the prophet that we are still talking about you today. None of us ever talks about Penina's children. In fact, I don't think they are even referenced or recorded anywhere in the Bible. God comes big, comes, comes somewhat late. He doesn't come late, but he takes his time when he's preparing something big. I'm decreeing to someone tonight. It may look like God is late, but I'm telling you God is not late. He's taking his time because he's preparing something great something glorious, something wonderful, a marriage that will last your lifetime, a marriage that you will enjoy. Look at your daddy and your mommy in your, your daddy and your mommy in Canada. You see their marriage, you see, how, you see how it is working. That is how the kind of marriage God wants to give you. Something that will last you a lifetime and I pray that it shall be your portion in the mighty precious name of Jesus Christ. Number five thing that I want to say to you tonight in the little time I have left is keep yourself be faithful and be pure. If you are waiting on the Lord, please make sure that you are really waiting on Him. Be faithful. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't take shortcuts. Remember what we read from Psalms 1. It says, do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. There are many Christian singles today. They claim they are waiting on God, but behind the scene, they are taking shortcuts. They are doing the wrong things. But I'm saying to you tonight, do not follow the crowd. Do not follow popular opinion. Do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Follow God and he will come true for you. I read something to you from the book of Job 14 and verse 14. It says if a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait until my change come. Wait on God, your change is coming. Wait on God, your breakthrough is coming. Wait on God, your lifting is coming. In the name of Jesus, in, 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 in a few seconds, I want you to live your voice and say father i receive the grace to wait upon you until you come true for me until you deliver my blessing in the name of jesus and so shall it be in jesus mighty precious name we have prayed amen amen and amen and the last thing that i want to say to you tonight singles godly and seeking it, it may look as if you have been seeking for long it may look as if you have been waiting to be found for long but i want to say to you tonight keep looking unto god you will not be ashamed you will not be disappointed you will not be put to shame there is a story in the bible in the book of mark 
praise the Lord. Mark 11, the Bible talks about the story of the court, the donkey that was tied to a pole. No one has ever touched or used it. It was there. Other donkeys came and left. It was there. But what that donkey thought, for in that donkey's mind and in the mind of the people around that donkey, they thought this donkey is useless. This donkey is tied down here, not useful for nothing. What they did not know was that Jesus was going to be the one riding on that donkey. What they did not know was that a day was coming when that same donkey is going to ride the king of glory into Jerusalem where every other person, every other donkey will lay their clothes and lay their trees and everything and that donkey will walk gloriously on it. I'm saying to you tonight, it may look like you have been forgotten. It may look like you have been waiting for too long. Wait! Because God has prepared something great. He has pre he's preparing something wonderful. Like that donkey, your day of glory is coming. Your day of glorification is coming. The Lord is going to beautify your life. The marriage is going to come. All that you are trusting in Magade, Bragadoza, Elima Hanto, Bragada, it's going to come. But I'm saying to you tonight, don't be discouraged. Don't give up. Don't lose heart. Don't leave. Don't, don't give up on Jesus. Don't throw in the tower. Don't, don't say it is, it is too late. It is never late when God is involved. I leave you with a verse of the scripture tonight. Psalms 34 and verse 5. Psalms 34 and verse 5. It says, those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their face. Those who look to him will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their face. My sister, I say to you, no shadow of shame will darken your face. As long as you put your eyes on Jesus Christ, you will not be ashamed and you will not be disappointed in the name of Jesus. My time is over. I want you to lift your voice and say this one prayer and say, Lord, I receive the grace to put my eyes upon you, not to follow the world, not to follow the pattern of the world, not to take shortcuts. I will wait. Waiting is not easy, but receive the grace tonight and tell him, Lord, I will wait. I will wait. I take grace to wait on you in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord, for everyone trusting you for marriage, for one thing or the other, whatever it is, as they look up to you, I pray they will never be ashamed. In the name of Jesus, I pray you will come true for them. In the name of Jesus, I pray that this day and this convention will mark a turning point in all their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my God. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty, precious name. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you, and I will see you again very soon. Goodbye for now. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.